Picture this. Instead of joining a football academy run by Liverpool, Manchester City or any other big club in England, a gifted young English player finds himself enrolling in a private boarding school nestled amidst the West Midlands. A school that's run within the confines of a beautiful 19th century country house, where the young player is expected to train diligently alongside fellow prospects. Their collective goal? To hone their footballing skills and talents leveraging the expertise of the finest coaches, physios, and training facilities at their disposal to groom themselves into world-class footballers. While this might sound like some English La Masia or Clairefontaine fantasy conjured up by an England football fan, the institute actually existed as the Lillishaw National School. Established in 1984 by the then England manager, Sir Bobby Robson, and the FA's then director of coaching, Charles Hughes, the Lillishaw National School was a school of excellence, situated inside the Lillishaw Hall in Shropshire. Before 1999, professional youth training in England mainly occurred in schools and centres of excellence. Among them, Lillishaw was widely regarded as the best. Alumni of the school include the likes of Michael Owen, Jamie Carragher, and Jermaine Defoe. When we think of youth training in England today, our minds naturally gravitate towards the youth club academy system. These academies, while still discerning in their selection process, are not completely out of reach for young boys who dream of becoming professional football players. Out of the 12,000 boys currently enrolled in institutional youth football around the world, approximately 3,500 find themselves enrolled in Premier League academies. Lillishall presents a different story. Out of the 2,000 boys who are assessed annually by the FA in local, regional and national trials, just 16 would be offered scholarships to train at the football school. If you were among the lucky 16 selected to attend Lillishall, you would be expected to move away from home and into the Lillishall country estate at the tender age of 14. There, you would begin your first year at the school and complete your formal training over a span of two years. Upon enrolment, you'd be expected to follow a strict daily routine that was a mix of traditional academic studies and rigorous football training. On Monday mornings, you'd wake up at around 6.45am in a room shared with one of your Lillishaw peers. After getting ready, you'd both head off to the nearby Idsall Comprehensive School for your regular academic classes. Here, you'd complete your formal education while training at Lillishaw for the next two years. After wrapping up morning classes, you'd return to Lillishaw in the afternoon, where you would carry out your training sessions with the other Lillishaw boys and, occasionally, with the full England national team. Tuesdays would start with football training in the morning, followed by academic classes in the afternoon. Wednesdays meant a full day at school, followed by training in the evening back at Lillishaw. Thursdays were another full day at school, but no training in the evening. Fridays began with morning classes and concluded with afternoon training back at Lillishaw. On Saturdays, instead of training, you would attend a top-flight football match, typically in the Midlands as it was the closest region, to witness the skills and talents of professional senior players firsthand. This would serve as inspiration and motivation for your own weekly football match the following day on Sunday, where you put all your training to use and play an official match with your Lillishaw peers. Much like many of today's football talents, most of the boys selected for Lillishaw came from working class backgrounds, and the lifestyle they lived at the boarding school were worlds apart from what they were used to back at home. Adjusting to such a highly regimented and foreign environment at the young age of 14 was a huge challenge. Struggling to adapt or facing criticism from coaches meant you'd had to cope without the support of your family or friends nearby. Lillishaw was likened to a posh prison by some students, who felt isolated and lonely amidst the grand country estate without family and friends to confide in. Additionally, there was a social hierarchy among students, with second years at Lillishaw often feeling superior because they were older and had already completed a year of the program. This issue of hierarchy extended to their time at the Idsall Comprehensive School, where they faced ostracism from the local boys who envied their status as footballers in training. For some young footballers, the challenges at Lillishaw proved to be too overwhelming, leading them to ultimately leave and return home. On the other hand, because of the hardships they endured and how quickly they had to mature, many of the boys formed a strong camaraderie among themselves, a brotherhood. With only each other to rely on, they gravitated towards one another, sticking together both at Lillishaw and at the comprehensive school. From hosting parties on the estates to cheering each other on during training sessions, the boys filled the void of missing their family and hometown friends by forming close relationships with one another. 
These connections extended well beyond their time at Lillishall, evolving into lifelong friendships for many of the alumni. Reflecting on their experiences at Lillishall, Michael Owen and Jamie Carragher both acknowledged the initial challenges they faced when they first arrived at the programme, but also emphasised that their time at Lillishall not only contributed to their development as footballers, but were also some of the best years of their lives. Despite cosigns from the likes of Owen and Carragher, the Lillishall National School was eventually suspended in 1999 by the Football Association. The responsibility of developing young English footballers was then officially distributed to individual clubs across the nation, with the modern youth academy system formally being introduced a year earlier in 1998 by then FA Technical Director Howard Wilkinson. The end of Lillishall was due to multiple factors. One of these, as Wilkinson himself stated, was purely logistical. The introduction of the youth club academy system meant there would be a larger pool of English talent to foster and develop. Additionally, there was a sense of difficulty and inequity within Lillishall's School of Excellence model regarding the selection process. Wilkinson criticised it as too elitist and limited, as a lot of young players with potential, including football legends Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard, were rejected from Lillishall. There was a fear that they wouldn't be able to match up against other boys who were maturing faster than them. For example, Gerard was overlooked because he was considered too frail at the time to compete with the other selected boys. Michael Owen was reported to have disagreed with this notion, stating that Lillishall brought together the creme de la creme of the nation's young footballers, and having this limited number of young players trained together in a specialised environment was better than the club academy system, which risked grouping talented young players with less capable ones. Although on the surface this line of thinking seems logical, the reality didn't reflect it. Most of the alumni who attended the school didn't go on to have prolific careers, with maybe one or two from each generation reaching top-tier status in football. For every Michael Owen, there were a dozen other boys who didn't make it as top English footballers, let alone pass for world-class players. The substantial financial investment into the programmes, yielding only two or one or zero top English players per year, didn't seem to be paying off. This led many to deem the Lillishall experiment as an outright failure, one that was alleviated by the club academy system that succeeded it. Although the Lillishall School of Excellence no longer exists, the concept still resonates with me. The idea of the best young players in the nation all training together in this beautiful 19th century setting and building a strong brotherhood amongst each other seems so idyllic, even if the reality failed to produce the top tier English players the FA wanted. Still, you just can't help but wonder, how would it look like if it was still around today? Who among our top young players today would have been selected to attend the programme? Bellingham, Palmer, Foden, Saka? These young players attending Lillishall would have been an interesting thing to see, but on the other hand, how many of them would have been overlooked and never given a chance like Gerard? And how many would have completely left the programme because they wouldn't be able to handle the pressure of maturing quickly and moving away from home at such a young age? I guess we'll never know, but we'll always have the past generations of Lillishall talent to look back on as another interesting part of English football history.